Let's get more on the story. We're joined by Richard Weiss, who joins me from Washington, D.C. is the director of the Center for Political Military Analysis at the Hudson Institute. Richard, many thanks for speaking to us in TRT World. <laughs> now, there's been much made about the term denuclearization, how the U.S. and North Korea are not exactly on the same page when it comes to what it means in principle. But when it does come down to it, when the discussions enter into the nitty-gritty. Will we see some sort of compromise from either side on this issue? What looks like will happen is that there will be a meeting between the two presidents on, in Singapore on June 12th, but most likely they will, as you suggest, agree vaguely to the principle of denuclearization, uh, affirm their commitment to have a, a Korean peninsula without nuclear weapons, um, and, and then defer, though, the difficult questions to working groups to further study and so on. And that is actually the pattern we've seen in the past. We've seen many, uh, well, uh, several meetings between the Korean presidents or agreements with the United States or even agreements between North Korea and five other countries. But the problem is always been in the implementation and verification. Eliminating North Korea's nuclear weapons could take more than a decade. It will require very extensive, intrusive inspections, the kind that we had recently with the Iran deal. And it's just not at all clear that that kind of agreement is something the North Koreans are yet prepared to agree to. Exactly. Verification is the other major obstacle. So what you're saying is you don't think... Uh, that anything tangible can actually come out of this uh, meeting between Trump and Kim Jong-un? I would say that the history shows that these kind of agreements don't stick, that in the end they tend to fall apart. However, there's a good, uh, there's a possibility, maybe even a good possibility and a hopeful possibility that I'm wrong. There are some factors that are different this time. We've got a new North Korean ruler. We've got uh, a China that is very concerned by the U.S. administration, the unpredictability and, and its willingness to confront China and other issues. Uh, we have uh, sanctions that are more extensive than the past. And we have a, a, a South Korean government that seems very eager to play the median role between the United States and North Korea. So it's possible these other factors will overcome the weight of history. But historical experience shows that in the end, these agreements just are to, do not last. What about Trump himself? Because I've heard some analysts say uh, that he is keen to secure a quick deal because he wants a boost ahead of midterm elections. Uh, could we see compromise because of that? That may be a factor. He may want to come in and agree to just a vague set of principles and then say, look, look what I did. I, I deserve the Nobel Prize. I, I did what Obama couldn't do and so on. So that is a possible factor. Uh, it, we won't, you know, it's, it's probably not going to be a decisive factor uh, and in its weight is unknown, but that is one other factor that could lead to an agreement. But then that means he'll probably agree to terms which won't be fully verifiable or won't be as much as, say, the Pentagon or others would like to see. And that could cause problems later on. What do you think, uh, and I'm sure you've been asked this many times, what do you think Kim uh, Jong-un wants from this? We've seen him send his uh, top spy master to the U.S. Uh, for these talks. Uh, he's obviously taking them very, very seriously. What is his objective here? The, I mean, it's, I would think that he would have multiple objectives. He, his ideal would be to, I mean, just having the summit is itself a victory in a way because it shows that he's a, he can claim that he's equivalent to a U.S. president in terms of diplomatic stature. Uh, he would like the United States and other countries to recognize North Korea as a, as a nuclear power and describe this as an arms control agreement rather than denuclearization agreement. That's, I mean, it's not clear he's going to get that. More likely, he will get sanctions relief, some kind of assurances about the security and economic health from the United States and, more importantly, from other countries. So he could see a, pursue a variety of objectives. But what worries me about him 
is that just last year his tone was completely different. So I, I'm, I'm kind of worried that this, his recent shift may just be instrumental rather than a fundamental rethink of how to pursue North Korea's national security interests. Richard White's no doubt we will talk about this again. Richard, uh, the director of the Center for Political Military Analysis at the Hudson Institute. Many thanks.